In this lesson, we're going to talk some about how your rotation gimbal works and some uh, walls we can run into with something called gimbal lock if we're unaware about how this thing works. Um, so this is your rotation tool. And if I double click on here, um, we have various rotation settings in here, local, world, and gimbal. Uh, if you've watched the video on local uh, world and uh, object space. This is similar to how this works. Um, but we have to know how rotations are handled in Maya. And if you notice here we have X, Y, and Z uh, rotations uh, over here in the channel box for uh, any object. And so when we start rotating things, those numbers start changing. Um, they don't always work how you might think they work. So here's a good example of when I grab X here, and rotate it, we see only X moving. And I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And now I'm going to grab Z and rotating it. And that's the only thing changing over here. And I'm undoing it. So it's set back to world space again. And I'm rotating it here in Y. Same deal. Now, if you notice, if I rotate in X, though, we get one value. Now, if I start to rotate in Z, all the values are changing. And what's going on there is how those rotations are solving. And they're using something called Euler math. And what's essentially going on is it's, if you've ever seen those big rings that people like rotate and spin around in, uh, big gyroscopes, um, it's very similar to how rotations work in 3D, or at least in Maya. Um, and it's as if it's a ring parent inside a ring inside a ring. And so Local world space rotations just give us nice and easy to use visual rotation gimbals that, you know, this is easy to think about as I'm rotating it, but as far as the numbers here, especially when it comes to animation, can get a little bit confusing. Um, let me undo that. So let's look at what's really happening here. If we switch over to gimbal mode, then we can start seeing how it's actually looking at the rotations to see why we're getting those numbers. Now, when I move X, you'll notice this time Z doesn't come with it. It's as if X is just spinning on its own. Let's go ahead and rotate Z and look what happens. Well, now X and Y are coming with. And if we rotate Y, you'll notice that X is the only axis moving, but Z seems to be staying in place. So, <clears throat> what's going on there? is I've set up a little example file here to kind of show us how Maya thinks of rotations. And we have three rings here. This uh, x-axis is parented under the y-axis, which is parented under the z-axis. So if we go look at our outliner here, you can see how this is parented. And this is how Maya kind of thinks about rotations as it's solving it. And this is, uh, it has a solve, or, or, ah, solve order, and that's X, Y, Z uh, for this default setup. So you'll notice we can move X, and it can spin all at once, and it doesn't affect the other two axes. But as soon as I start to spin Y, it starts to take X with it. And this right here is what we call gimbal lock, when two axes line up, and I'll show you what happens in that case in a second. And if we grab Z, it takes all those cases, so or all those axes. And so this is how Maya is solving it. So that's that's why when I jump back here and I'm in local mode and I spin X, Z's not really down here. It's still vertical as far as the gimbal's concerned. It's still over here. Now you notice when I rotate this we only get one axis. Um, and if you aren't aware of this, what can happen is you end up in something called gimbal lock. And, okay, I've rotated this in a way now where I'm pretty much down to two axes. I don't have, you know, X and Y are technically the same thing now. Or, not X and Y, X and Z. And I don't have a number that rotates an X anymore until I turn Y to that right value. Um, why that matters is this can really mess with your graph curves as you're animating something. Um, where, let's go ahead and 
animate this guy into position of gimbal lock. Back in my rotation tool here. Let's see if I remember my axis rotations there. So now we're on gimbal lock at this point. It's not much to see. Uh, here I'll, I'll even, let's rotate it so we'll say 90 degrees in X and 90 degrees in Y and they're right on top of each other now. They, they are the exact same thing. And let me do that again because it helps if I turn on auto key so it actually keeps those. Okay, so now we have something we can see. It, it's spinning and it's rotating at the same time to get into a gimbal lock position. And now we're down to only two axes. We've lost one axis because they're right on top of each other now. Um, so if I'm in my graph editor, go ahead and open this up, and I want to spin, uh, let's see if I could get my move, to, oh I can't, that's right, I can't spin it that way. So if I go to local and if I want to spin it here, Well, in that case, it actually is working. If we want to spin it on on here, though, as far as the uh, graph is concerned, it's just to get really confusing of what curve do I go use to go do this. So let's, let's try Y. And you see it when I mess with my graph curves, there's nothing really to go do this, which isn't such a big deal in this case, but if you're animating and you have a character and there's you know a ton of controls and you're trying to figure out like why why can't I get it to spin that way? Well, this is why. So first off is just being aware of this, and, and this is how it works. So again, if we, we look at this, it's th this again is called a, the the rotation order. This is X Y Z. It starts from the inside and goes out. Um, and so Z takes everything with it, so Z will rotate X and Y. Y will only rotate X because that's its child, but it's not, uh, Z is its parent, not its child. And then X doesn't answer anybody, so it gets spin all at want and nothing, nothing happens to the other two gimbals. Um, we can go and change this rotation order. So there may be times where a different rotation order is better. So let's Look at this real quick. I'm going to open up the uh, tribute editor for this, uh, the cone, and go into, let's see, where's, oh, it's right here, uh, rotate order. And you can see I could change it from X, Y, Z, Y, Z, X, any, any combination that's available. And that'll change the solve order, because there may be certain situations where you want one solve order over another. Uh, this will, if you follow through to uh, building a reverse foot rig, there's uh, very, good cases for changing your rotation order in, in there. And let's go ahead and example this. So here we have a reverse foot rig that we've set up. Um, if you're not familiar with this, we cover it in another video. Uh, but think of this as a, a foot setup. And this is the toe here. So if you were to stand up on your toe, that would be standing up on your toe. This is the ball of your foot. That's the ankle of your foot. Um, and we want to stand up on the toe of our foot, but then be able to twist our foot on the ground it, like you were putting out a cigarette or something like that. Um, so if we look at our rotations, we can see here in Z, that'll lift our foot up. And now if we want to twist, if we twist in Y, well now it's rocking the foot back and forth rather than twisting now. Um, but if we were still down, we could twist. And we could change this with our rotation order. So if I open up the attribute editor for this, and I believe it's a YZX. So I have Y on the inside, so nothing is spinning when Y is going. Uh, X will rotate Y, but not Z, and Z will rotate all three axes. Let's try that one out. And go back to my channel box. If I lift up in Z and rotate in Y now. Nope, still not the right one. Let me look at my gimbal. That'll probably help tell me. There we go, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Z, Y, X. And now when I rotate in Z, let's go back to our channel box. So I could rotate Z and we lift up and down and rotate in Y. <coughs> and 
Now I get that twisting motion, so I stay on my toes, but I'm lifted up, and I can still lift even more, and still pivot on that spot. And, and you know, so I made a little mistake there, but you can see you don't always really have to understand, you know, what the the rotation order is. Um, as long as you you understand the concept, you can go in here and start to fiddle with it, and go like, wait, is this one right? Is this what I need? And okay, well, that that probably works too. So you know, usually there's more than one option for what you need. Um, and what you're thinking about a lot of time when you're changing your rotation order is, uh, you know, something like a shoulder is a good example of um, what needs to be priority over others. So uh, lifting up your arm and swinging your arm back and forth are probably priority, and then twisting your arm, really, you don't do any of that. So you can see here as I'm rotating the arm that we've achieved gimbal lock. I can't swing the arm back and forth anymore. Um, which is not going to be easy to animate. We've lost that animation channel. It doesn't do anything anymore in the graph editor. Uh, but if I would change the rotation order to uh, X, Z, Y, I can now put the arm down 90 degrees, down to the side, and I still have my gimbal to swing back and forth. So if we were in local or world mode, we wouldn't be seeing this, but this is what's happening behind the scenes as far as the channel box numbers are concerned and what's happening in your uh, graph editor later when you want to go edit your animation. Um, so this is all stuff to be really aware of. It, it, these are the little things that affect it here and there. Uh, but you could always go change this. You're not bound to it. Um, it's always editable. Uh, and you're just thinking, okay, if I, you know, is this something I need to rotate 90 degrees? Okay, does my rotation order uh, get me into gimbal lock when I do this? And if it does, um, not the end of the world. You just need to change your rotation order. And there's usually something that will solve for that. There's not usually something that, you know, Unless you know, something's like spinning in space, like it's been launched in orbit and it's out of control spinning, you know, maybe then you'll still get in the gimbal lock somehow. But you know, for body parts or anything like that, um, not something you usually have to worry about. So that covers the lesson for gimbal lock and and how gimbal rotations work. Uh, hopefully that's made sense again, and we'll deal with this more in other uh, videos coming up. Thanks.